Last week, I showed you how to create your own de-bloated Windows 11 ISO using Tiny11 Builder. But this week, we're gonna put it through its paces and see if it was worth it. Stay tuned. So, it looks like bloated operating systems are just gonna be the new norm. Because of that, de-bloating these operating systems has become pretty popular. Some of the most popular videos on my channel have been to do with de-bloating Windows 10 and 11. This trend has also led to numerous pre-de-bloated Windows ISOs being created, sometimes of increasingly shifty sources. Nothing against the people that put the hard work into creating these ISOs in the first place. I'm not even implying that these people are creating these ISOs are doing anything malicious at all. However, bad actors can take their hard work and use it in malicious ways. That's the reason why we should only download software from reputable sources. But, you know, at the same time, we can't expect someone who puts time and energy into creating a free ISO for everyone to have to pay for hosting to allow everyone to download a 4 gigabyte ISO from a reputable source. That's why I'm glad the creator of Tiny11 made a script so people can create the ISO on their own using the official Windows 11 image from Microsoft. And that's why we covered that in last week's video. So make sure you follow the video from last week instead of just downloading Tiny11 from some random website. Now, before we get into the benefit or lack thereof of Tiny11, we gotta pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop with a valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. So, Obviously, the first thing I did after installing Tiny11 is look at the memory usage. That should give us some pretty good indication of how well Tiny11 de-bloats Windows 11. So, right here is the memory tab from the task manager on a factory install of Windows 11. And right here is the memory tab from Tiny11. As you can see, there's about 700 megabytes less memory usage in Tiny11 than there is in Windows 11. However, that only tells half the story. If you look down the memory tab and you see the amount of memory that's cached, cached memory is essentially memory that's being passively used by the operating system. So as you can see, with the factory install of Windows 11, that's sitting at about 4.8 gigs, while Tiny11 is about 700 megs. So we can see that there's a considerable drop in memory usage in Tiny11. Now, if we move over to hard drive usage, we can see that the factory install of Windows 11 is sitting right around 41 gigs, while Tiny11 is sitting at 33.9. That's a savings of a little over seven gigs. Now, another thing that you need to keep in mind with these numbers is that this was also done on both installs with the factory install of Windows 11 as well as Tiny11 where the latest updates had been installed from Windows Update. So Microsoft could have downloaded some bloatware, but I looked at the memory usage in Tiny11 before and after Windows Update and there was no difference. So in both memory usage and hard drive usage, we have a pretty good benefit from Tiny11. But the reason why we install a debloated copy of Windows 11 isn't to save hard drive space. It's to save resources so we can play games. So, let's take a look at some games and see if running a debloated copy of Windows 11 gives us any improvement at gameplay. The first game that we're looking at today is Black Mesa. This is a Half-Life 1 remake in the Half-Life 2 engine. This game was benchmarked at 3440 by 1440 with the settings on Ultra. In Windows 11, we got an average FPS of 175.1 and a 1% low of 112.2. If you're looking for a huge boost in performance, 
you're definitely not gonna find it in this game. Because once I did the same benchmark in Tiny11, I got an average FPS of 174.4 and a 1% low of 113.9. These results are clearly within the margin of error, and we see Tiny11 losing by about 0.7 FPS. Moving along, the second game I tested was GTA 5. GTA 5 gave me a gameplay overlay error that wanted me to open the Microsoft Store when I originally launched the game in Tiny11. This wasn't too big of a deal because I canceled it and the game played fine. However, errors like this can be common with debloated copies of Windows. This game was benchmarked at 3440 by 1440 with the settings on high. In Windows 11, we got an average frame rate of 125.2 and a 1% low of 89.8. .8. Unfortunately, again, we didn't see a huge boost in performance. Once switching to Tiny11, I got an average frame rate of 125.4 and a 1% low of 89.6. Again, these results are well within the margin of error, but at least Tiny11 gave us a 0.2 FPS improvement. Not exactly something that's noticeable in game, but it's a win, just barely though. Moving along, the next game I tested was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This game was set to 3440 by 1440 with the settings on high. I also enabled RTX and DLSS for this game. In Windows 11, we got an average FPS of 98.3 and a 1% low of 88.3. Hoping to finally see some improvement with Tiny11, we're gonna have to wait because it's not gonna be in this game either. In Tiny11, we got an average frame rate of 98.1 and a 1% low of 88.3. Again, this game is well within the margin of error, and unfortunately, Tiny11 lost by 0.2 FPS. The next game I looked at was Red Dead Redemption 2. This game was benchmarked at 3440 by 1440 with the settings on medium. In Windows 11, we got an average frame rate of 67.6 and a 1% low of 51.6. Unfortunately, we're going to have to keep waiting if we want to see any improvements because in Tiny11, we got an average frame rate of 67.4 and a 1% low of 52.7. This is yet another game that falls well within the margin of error with Tiny11 losing by 0.2 FPS. However, this game did see almost a 1 FPS jump in the 1% low. I guess beggars can't be choosers at this point. Moving along, the next game we're looking at is Cyberpunk 2077. This game was tested at 3440 by 1440 with the settings on medium. I also tested this game with RTX and DLSS set to medium. With Windows 11, we got an average frame rate of 35.9 with a 1% low of 31.5. If you didn't guess already, Tiny11 didn't do much better. In fact, it didn't do better at all getting an average frame rate of 34.8 and a 1% low of 29.5. While this is still within the margin of error, it's the biggest loss yet for Tiny11, losing by over one FPS in both the average frame rate and the 1% low. So there you have it, I guess. Is it worth using Tiny11 instead of just the default install of Windows 11? It's really not. Literally every benchmark we did fell within the margin of error. Worse, that margin of error benefited the default Windows 11 install in most games. It was by just a fraction of a frame in each game, but the default Windows install still won. In fact, the only game that Tiny11 won was GTA 5 by 0.2 FPS. The only benefit that I saw from Tiny11 was a slight improvement in frame timings with our 1% low and our 0.1% low. This does suggest a slight bit more stability in our frame rate, but it was unnoticeable in games. I'm thinking that most of these results are due to the fact that my system was GPU bound in every game. My CPU never went over 50%, and most of the time it was in the 30s. So maybe Tiny11 would be more beneficial on a system that was more CPU bound. The system I used for testing is this Ryzen 5 5600 with 32 gigs of RAM and an RTX 3060, with both the CPU and GPU water cooled. 
I'm honestly considering repeating all of these tests on a lower spec system to see if it makes any difference. If that's something that you would like to see, let me know in the comments below. It takes a lot of time to run these tests and I have to load two operating systems and configure them in order to do the tests in the first place. So I'm not gonna waste my time if you guys don't wanna see it. But either way, at this point, I can't recommend Tiny11. Sometimes debloated copy of Windows can be a hassle with, with compatibility issues. That's the reason why I don't debloat Windows on customer systems, nor do I run debloated copies of Windows on my own systems. When you remove elements of Windows, bloat or not, it can lead to weird compatibility problems. For instance, Tiny11 doesn't include Microsoft Edge. Many people might like that, but software you install is going to expect it to be there and could cause issues. The only issue that I saw was a gameplay overlay error launching GTA 5 just the first time in Tiny11. That error never repeated the other times I launched the game. Tiny11 legitimately does save resources from a default install of Windows 11, but at least on my system, it didn't make a difference to real world performance. However, if you would like something that is a lot easier and does lead to real world performance improvements, then check out this video where I show you how simply updating your GPU drivers can give you a surprising boost in performance. As always, you guys have a great day.